Hey everybody, it's Canada Graphs here. Um, so this is now the third time I have uh, been doing this video over because every time I go to start working on it, uh, things change. First time was actually my own laziness. I just didn't use the material fast enough and by the time I got around to it, I realized it was kind of outdated. And then this most recent time I had it all set up. I uh, edited it. I just hadn't inputted photos into it yet and uh, all the info that came out uh, on Tuesday yesterday dropped and made like 60% of the video irrelevant so I'm gonna redo it now here with the newer information added in so let's start off first uh, as some of you noticed recently I passed 5,000 subscribers and I uh, I said in my community tab section that I would have an autograph giveaway. So the details to that will be at the end of this video. So if you're here just for that, I guess you can skip to uh, more or less the end. The, uh, I'll probably put a timestamp in the description so you can find it more easily. So yesterday the CW announced that all of their current running shows that are not currently slated to end were getting renewed. This of course in the Arrowverse that means that the four main shows, five if you want to include Black Lightning, um, the f four main shows being The Flash, Supergirl, uh, Legends of Tomorrow and Batwoman have all been renewed. Now <clears throat> part of my old video was going to be talking about how Batwoman and Supergirl were going to get renewed despite what uh, what clickbaity articles were suggesting otherwise. So, um, you know, I'm going to quickly go over those four shows and why it wasn't a surprise in most cases. For The Flash, uh, that's an easy one. I mean, it's the highest rated show on the network, highest uh, <clears throat> viewership, highest ad revenue, no chance that was getting cancelled. They're going to run that until Grant Gustin tells them he's kind of bored of doing it. Now, I mean, there could be, there could come a point. I mean, if he, if he just decides he's never going to retire, they might eventually pull the plug on him at some point. But I would say comfortably, you have at least two more years of The Flash and potentially probably like four more, depending how long Grant wants to keep doing this role. That's where that show sits right now. I don't see that changing any time in the future. That show is on as long as Grant decides he wants to be on the show. Uh, yeah, they need some side characters, but there's not a single side character on the show, no matter how much you love that character, that is going to be the reason that show gets canceled. If they suddenly uh, can't come to terms on a new contract for Tom Cavanaugh, or Carlos Valdez, or Daniel Panabaker, or uh, Candace Patton, or Jesse L. Martin. It doesn't matter. The show goes on with Grant, and they will just fill in the holes with new characters that most people will just uh, eventually learn to deal with. You might stop watching it, you might boycott it because you're like, I can't believe they got rid of insert a uh, character that I really love. But at the end of the day, that is going to mean nothing to them. They're going to go on as long as Grant goes on. In the case of Supergirl, this is, again, similar to Grant's in that that show goes on as long as Melissa Benoist wants to do the show. So even though Supergirl has slipped a little bit and is now uh, like fourth on the network, that's still in the top half of all the shows. you got to remember, out of that top half, one of those shows that's tied with it, Supernatural, is ending this year. So, I mean, it's it's doing very well. It's in no, no uh, panic yet. Um, it's, it's a show that, as long as Melissa Benoist wants to do the show, that show is going on. Again, irrelevant what side characters come and go. It does not matter if all of them leave at some point. They'll fill up those holes with some new characters, and the show will keep going on. The Supergirl property is valuable to them, and they're not going to end it until Melissa wants to end it. Um, so yeah, that, that show was also a lock. 
those are those are two shows. Even though there was articles out there about Supergirl, and I saw them and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" But those are two shows that there was no chance they were getting canceled. So this brings us to the new kid on the block, uh, Batwoman. Um, there was a lot of articles, lots. Uh, a lot of a lot of articles were suggesting that show is getting canceled for any variety of reasons. A lot of it was from uh, people who just hated on the property because of that terrible uh, trailer they did. Others were hating on it because they thought it was holding up the chance of getting a Batman series. Others just hated on it because uh, whatever. I don't know anymore. Um, but the Batman, the Batwoman show, uh, is number two on the network. Number two in viewers. Number two in demo. No network in the world is canceling their number two show outside of a controversy. And there's no controversy around that right now. So those that were out there campaigning, saying, "Oh, cancel Batwoman because it's bad," or "Cancel Batwoman because of this," or the ones that were just claiming Batwoman was going to get cancelled because they said the numbers are dropping are out to lunch and have no grasp on reality. Yeah, the numbers went down. You're absolutely right. As did every other show on the network outside of uh, I think it was Charmed was the only one that actually went up. I can't remember anymore. Um, or All American maybe. Anyways, the whole network as a whole dropped in viewership compared to last year. So, it's a it's a network wide problem, and uh, the number two show on the network's not going anywhere just because it dropped viewers. It's still above a million viewers. That puts it well above everybody else on the network outside of the Flash, and it is a DC property with name recognition, and that carries more for that show than anything else. Just. This is the same thing with Supergirl, the same thing with The Flash. As long as Ruby Rose wants to do this role, that show is probably staying around. And I know that is a shocker to the people who want the show to leave because they don't like it. But the Batwoman name carries more recognition than insert generic show. I'm telling you, in, in three years down the line, when Batwoman's ratings slip a bit more and it's... Uh, let's say on par with the ratings of I don't know, all american um if, if there's a toss-up between those two shows if they're in similar ratings all americans the one getting the cut not batwoman because batwoman has name recognition it is a title that carries attention for the network all american doesn't do that uh charmed isn't going to do that uh legacies doesn't do that these are shows that can be thrown out with bad ratings. Batwoman, even if down the line it starts to struggle, struggle ratings-wise, it can still hold out on uh, on its uh, its pull with the name. So, yeah. Now, as for the last of the bunch, Legends of Tomorrow. Whew. I was really wrong about this one. <clears throat> I, I definitely had it pegged uh, to be to be uh, getting cancelled. <laughs> um, I still believe if some things hadn't lined up, it would have gotten cancelled. I, I mean, obviously, uh, ending Brandon Routh's uh, run on the show helped them out notably in trying to get that show uh, to a tighter budget. That was the reason why they were getting rid of him, was just for that reason, to see if... Uh, See if they could get a tighter budget. They didn't do it because, oh, the story has ended. They didn't do it any reason like that. They did it because they needed to trim some fat off the roster. And you're not doing that with the people making the lower end salaries. So they had to get rid of one of the big three. Brandon, I guess, draw, drew the short straw. I think it was probably a little um, helpful for them that they could also get rid of Courtney in the same go. So... I think that kind of sealed his fate a little bit more. But for Legends, I think a lot of the reason why they got a renewal is they're going to give the show a chance to do a little wrap-up. It'll probably be a 6-10 to 10 episode season, but on top of that, 
Um, there was something that came to my attention after I posted about Legends getting picked up that I wasn't aware of, and now that I am aware of it, it makes more sense. There's a potential writer's strike coming up, and so this is, this is tough for networks. And uh, one of the things that I think helped Legends here is the potential writer's strike. I think with the threat of a writer's strike, it's going to be a lot easier for Legends with a few months to get some ideas rolling, get some scripts in place, have that set up, and just keep them on the roster for now. Then wait until March for pilot season, see if those pilots even do anything, and then pick them up. Having Legends in your roster next season is a safe bet because at least you know they'll have material in play to film. Whereas a pilot filming in March that you don't know whether you're picking up until after that. By then, I mean, um, if there is a writer's strike, then um, newer shows might not have the chance to get enough scripts together to shoot a season or even a partial season so it's really a it's a risk that um a net especially a smaller network like cw it was a safer bet for them just to keep the material they have now knowing that those guys are already a group and can get to work sooner than putting together a new group for a new show so it was it's kind of a uh, hedge their bets thing I still don't think Legends gets a full season. I don't even know if they get a proper half season. I feel it will be somewhere from 6 to 10 episodes. If they get 13, I'd be a little surprised. Um, I've seen a few people saying, oh, well, they're doing it to get to 100 episodes. Well, that's a 17-episode season for them, and that is not, I think, financially viable for a show that whose budget it just keeps getting cut more and more. They didn't cut Brandon Roth because uh, they wanted to put more money into Bebo merchandise. Like, they they cut Brandon Roth because they're like, well, we need to cut corners to get into the budget that the network is supplying us. And that does not give them room to be doing 17 episodes. I, of course, had a lot of questions after the episode came out about why Tom Welling was in it for so little and why he wasn't Superman, and anything Tom Welling related. Okay, I, I know I've said this before, and uh, it doesn't matter how many times I told you guys, you were not going to believe it, but Tom Welling doesn't want to be Superman. He does not want to put on that suit. There was no amount of money they were going to throw at him that was going to be changing his mind on that. He probably took this role specifically because they're like, we have a way to wrap up your story. And he's like, I'm in for that. Anything else, if they had been like, oh, we'd like you to become a hero in this, he was not coming. He wanted nothing to do with that. Um, so I don't know why. I mean, I do understand. I understand fans want to be fans, but from a practical standpoint, I don't understand how people thought they're going to get more than a Clark Kent cameo from him. He's been very adamant up front in the past about he doesn't want to be Superman. So, you got what you're going to get. Those that went in thinking they were going to get more, they either don't follow the internet very much, or they had terribly high hopes. But yeah, um, that, that's that on that. Oh, and um, a few other people asked about Kevin Conroy being Batman. The, it, that's a little more of a licensing thing. I'm pretty certain uh, CW did not get permission from WB to have a live-action Batman running around in a scene. Uh, I think Kevin Conroy would have been up for at least dressing up in it. Obviously, he wouldn't have done any fighting scenes because he's a little past those days, but I think he would have done it. I think this was probably more of a studio... A DC property decision than him saying no but that I can't say for certain it just feels like from seeing how he is about the Batman character I feel he would have done it if given the opportunity I have had uh, 
someone a little while ago asked me why we haven't seen Psycho Pirate yet in uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, to be honest, I don't actually have a good answer for that. I'm a little surprised he hasn't shown up yet. And um, I'm not a comic book reader, so I don't really know how the story of Crisis goes. But I know I did, I did a lot of homework on it. Sorry, I, I did a lot of homework on it uh, preparing for Crisis apparently more than I needed but um I know he uh he had a part in it but according to like the uh fans I follow in that that do know the comics a little bit more his part should have come and gone already and since it hasn't I kind of feel they uh they don't have him now I don't know how that it like if they went through the trouble of building this character into the last crossover, then, then not paying it off this crossover, that's really weird. I don't know what would have happened that made them suddenly go, we can't use that character. But somewhere along the line, it seems that character has been forgotten about, along with, uh, you know, a, a few others. I mean... <laughs> If you do follow the comics, there's like 500 characters in the actual Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, series. That's not a, it's not like a ridiculous exaggeration. There's actually over 500 characters. Like I said, I had to study this leading up to the crossover because I wanted to make sure I was prepared for anything. There's 500 plus characters. Now, a lot of them are small. A lot of them literally are sharing one square of of one page but there's 500 of them you know and honestly in this crossover can you can you say with certainty that we've gotten 50 i haven't um i'm, I'm surprised how few they've actually had the uh, i mean i've i've enjoyed the crossover but i am at the same time understanding fans disappointment in the things they haven't paid off and haven't uh, brought in. And I think they really, I mean, they, they needed more episodes so that they could pull in more characters, but they weren't gonna get that. So, I mean, it, it was probably a kind of a, it was go always gonna be a letdown, I think. And I think for the really hardcore fans, this is, never going to meet their expectations for the casual fans or the fans of just the TV universe like myself. It's been fine. Uh, I've enjoyed it, but I also, after doing the homework I did on it, I am surprised how few characters they have used for it. They could have thrown away three minutes of the Supergirl episode and two minutes of the, Super, uh, the Flash episode and squeezed in five minutes of just random characters fighting somewhere against the shadow demons. They didn't have to be. They didn't have to be named characters. You could have just got eleven, uh, you know, locals, dressed them up in some type of attire that's semi close to the wardrobes of characters in the comics, and just had them fight in a scene somewhere. Could have been a twelve-second scene. Then you, yeah, have a couple more of them in another 20 second scene and you could have filled up one of the five minutes of screen time you threw away on stories that are only relevant to that show. Nobody watching Crisis cared about Lena and Alex drama. Nobody watching Crisis cared about the Barry and Iris drama. You could have thrown those minutes away and put them towards scenes that would have paid off uh, stuff for your actual fans like the, the and when I mean actual fans I mean fans of crisis not fans of individual shows because you know the West Allen fans would have wanted to see those West Allen moments but they get that 21 other episodes a season they didn't need it in this episode same with the Lena and Alex stuff completely pointless to the episode they could have cut out all of the the whiny drama from those two and just Got to the point of like, can you do this? I can do this. Here it is. 
move along. I realize you're cutting out the screen time of uh, those characters by doing that. But, you know, just like the West Allen thing, you get uh, 21 episodes of your season committed to those characters for one episode a year. You have to, you have to suck it up and accept that your character isn't going to be eating up a lot of screen time. Just live with it, you know? This is supposed to be an event for the fans, not for uh, shipping wars and uh, pointless dramas. Um, those storylines really didn't belong in Crisis. If you read the actual Crisis comic books, I don't think once was there a story where they were talking about uh, hurt feelings or uh, love uh, relationships, you know. Granted, I never read it, but just from the synopsises I've read, I don't remember anywhere in there something along those lines coming up. So that was just a CW dropping the ball as usual, not understanding the demographic they're targeting. Um, we get this watered down version because they were busy trying to appease 2% of their fan base. So, yeah. For, for the hardcore fans, they, they probably are pretty annoyed because the show is wasting these minutes on things that don't belong in the story. And for the fans of that stuff, they're annoyed because only that much time was wasted on it. So they weren't going to please anybody. Uh, instead, you know, typical CW stupid bullshit. So a few people obviously um, on the internet were speculating on what cameos there could be for the last two parts of Crisis on Infinite Earths that is now less than a week away. Well, I don't specifically know of any. What I am reasonably confident on, enough that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say it here, is the ones that people were hoping would be back for more definitely are not. Um, that a lot of people are like, well, we haven't got Tom Welling in a Superman suit yet. You're not getting that. You never were going to. That was never an option. Um, he only, I'm sure, took this role because they're like, hey, we have a way to write you off permanently. Um, I know a lot of people think about the Greg Berlanti comment about three Supermen in one scene. And no matter how many times you guys bring that up until I see it on screen, that as far as I'm concerned, was just him uh, misspeaking and not cl not clearing it up after the fact. Uh, a few other people have discussed the idea that Kevin Conroy could come back as a different Bruce Wayne. Also not happening. Um, he, uh, he, he did his role. He's not going to be back for a second version anytime soon. Um, People that are hoping he'll be the Bruce Wayne on Batwoman also don't understand uh, the reality of the fact he's in his 60s and the Bruce on Batwoman should be in his um, 30s? I don't know. Uh, a lot younger. <laughs> so that that's not an option. Um, you know, and the other one that people thought might be in it is Keenan Lonsdale. Uh, people are like, hey, he was in Vancouver filming The Flash. Takes nothing for him to go, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> the, he, he had his opportunity to be in the crossover, and he basically told them, no, I don't want to be. He has very little interest in doing this uh, stuff. and he had ve He's had very little interest in doing this stuff, and I'm sure the production tried to get him on board for a role in Crisis, and he probably shot it down. He does not seem interested in doing that anymore. I know other people were thinking, well, they could film some bigger cameos over Christmas break. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know how many times I can say no to that. That was never, ever, ever, ever an option. Thankfully, uh, Mark uh, Guggenheim came out just before Christmas and explained that that wasn't happening because he had said that they have completed filming on the cameos but there was people for weeks thinking they were going to get some wild cameos over Christmas break and that was never an option never ever an option because 
they have to still have crew come in to film that. None of the crew are coming in on Boxing Day or you know two days after Christmas to work on that. Union guys aren't booking off uh, their holidays to come in and film a 40 second scene. So the people that thought like they were gonna sneak in some cool cameos over the Christmas break were never aware of how filming works. Anything that has been shot for a cameo was done a while ago. It would have been done probably maybe by the first or second week of December. I can't see it being any later than the second week. I mean, they still were filming up until uh, the third week of December for the shows, but it would have been it would have been cutting it close. Another reason why, when people are like, "Well, they can do it over the Christmas break," and that that was never an option, is you got to remember those episodes come out on the 14th. They need time to edit that and fit it into the episode. I'm sure they left themselves a little wiggle room on the off chance they could get a couple of interesting small cameos, but they really were only holding maybe a minute of space out for that possibility. It's not like they were holding 10 minutes of screen time up on the off chance they could get two or three really kick-ass cameos to come in because they knew they weren't going to. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there'll be a couple of surprises that nobody was expecting. And uh, I don't know what they are, so I'm in the dark as much as you currently. Um, yeah. Okay, for that autograph giveaway, it's going to be pretty simple. You have to comment in this video your top three favorite characters on the flash it has to be the flash can't be another show it's on the flash it's going to be a flash autograph giveaway now i am and when i mean characters i don't mean a, a one-off character that had 14 seconds of screen time it's got to be a main or a uh fairly recurring character so name your top three in the comments and I am going to let a random number generator pick the winner and whoever the winner is that's picked, I guarantee you one of those three names you pick will be who you get. May not be your number one, may not be your number two, might be your number three, but you'll get one of them. And the winner for that, I will announce... How about January 14th around uh, 8 p.m. Pacific time? No, I'm, ju I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I will wait until uh, I'll wait until the morning of the 15th to announce it. That way, all the crisis hoopla is out of the way. So January 15th, sometime in the morning, you'll have to check back for a more specific time closer to then. So this is Canada Graph signing off tonight. Uh, see you around for the next video. Bye.